What's up, dude? You know those crazy viral cooking videos with millions of views? It's always just a pair of hands, peaceful music, and weird titles. What? Today, in my new series, we'll see about that. We're gonna put one of those recipes to the test and see if it's really worth the hype. And as always, there is no time to waste. Now let's go! Today's viral recipe is coming from Ola Rezepti. How many of these German Rezepti channels are there? A lot, I've already done three of these. And we just started this series. And this one is titled, Never Have I Eaten Such Delicious Fish Tender Recipe That, you gotta click on it, melts in your mouth. Okay, we all love a good salmon recipe, let's see how it goes. Nice looking piece of salmon to start off with. God, look at the fat streaks on that thing, dang. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh my gosh, don't ever remove a piece of salmon skin like that. I'll show you how to do it. Look at the knife. Look the way her hand is right behind the skin. She's gonna slice right through that skin and straight into her hand. I honestly cannot think of a worse way you could ever do that. Oh my God. Oh my God, I'm moving past it. I'd rather you use a weed whacker to remove the skin than do that. Okay, <clears throat> moving on. Salt and pepper on the fish. You can buy this shirt. This, sh <laughs> buy my shirt. <laughs> we are searing them off in butter. Can't argue with that. It doesn't look like that pan is hot enough to me. I'm never trying to come off like an elitist in these videos, even though it may seem that way. I'm just trying to teach people what I've learned in my career as a professional chef. That's good. The heat came back in the pan. It just looks like it started a little bit, uh, a little cold. Sear and take the fish out of the pan. This is a cool way to cook fish or meat in general. Sear, take it out, build a sauce in the pan, put the protein back into the sauce to finish. Nice way to cook. You get all that fond off the pan, which is nice. We got some grape tomatoes, we got some garlic, sauteed spinach, in butter, can't go wrong there, right? Looks good. I've personally found on my own cooking journey that most of the time people are overcooking spinach, drastically. I don't think there's any way we're not gonna come off like an elitist piece of shit here, Marcus. And then the tomatoes and the garlic, simple as that, and dried spring onions? I have used dried spring onions before, but it's not a common thing you're gonna see. I don't even know if I can find those, so I may just use fresh spring onions. And then just a whole bunch of cream. These recipes never specify the type of cheese you use. Although when I build a lot of these kind of sauces, I'm always adding Parmesan cheese. It just gives it that salty punch that it needs. Not saying you can't use another cheese, but Parmesan is great. There are, no way, man. We always blind react these recipes. I just said, you saw that? Parmesan, and there it is. There's the Parmesan. Well, we are on board with this one. Fish going back in the pan. It looks nice, really, really simple. For me, this sauce could really benefit from some wine or lemon or even a little bit of vinegar would be good. Honestly, I can't say I'm too crazy excited about this one. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's not bad, but is it worth all the hype? Is it worth 15 million views? We will see about that. And as always, we're gonna give it a rating one through 10. And if it's really, really good, we're gonna go out and destroy my refrigerator. Starting with some nice fatty salmon here. This is just farm salmon. If you wanna get the good stuff, get the good stuff. Like king salmon, for example, which is very expensive, but good. And what I'm gonna do here is first, like I'm slicing sushi, is cut it in half so I can get my portions accurate. And then those halves in half. This way you know you've got them all pretty close to the same. Now let's talk about skin. Personally, when I'm cooking salmon at home, I'm always leaving the skin on because I love crispy salmon skin. Although we are gonna follow her recipe today. Always have some paper towel nearby when you're working with fish like this so you can keep everything dry, so it's not slimy and slippery so you don't cut yourself. You just always need to make sure it's scaled, which this one is sort of half scaled. It's not a really good job. There are some scales down here. Generally, when working with salmon, I'd like to remove the skin from the whole filet before doing this. However, we are recreating a recipe, so we're gonna do it this way today. And I'm gonna show you two ways to do it. I'm putting a little bit of pressure on the top of the salmon, not enough to smash it. And then I'm just slicing in just to the skin. I'm keeping this knife completely flat and I'm just gonna pull through nice long dragging motions all the way through down out the belly. So there's no way I can get cut here because my hand is literally out of the way, right? There we go, boom, boom, boom. Pretty good job on that one. A tiny bit of flesh left on the salmon here. We wanna take the flesh off the salmon, not off of your fingers. Here's another way you can do it if you don't feel comfortable slicing towards yourself this way. I'm gonna slice in this way just a touch. Although for me, this one is actually a bit more difficult. And from here, I'm just gonna take like a little fork or something, you could use something else. We need to keep that skin taut. Be very careful with your knife here, keeping the skin flat and just dragging along, same as before. Boom, flesh is off, skin is off. Not too bad, but I definitely like doing it the other way. However, it does look fine. And I'm absolutely saving the skin. I'm just gonna pan fry this later, hit it with a little salt for my wife. In the restaurant, we would always take these bellies off, or even when I cook it at home, I also do that, because that portion right there is so thin, it's gonna cook so much quicker than this thick part right here. Having said that, because it has a much higher fat content, it is pretty forgiving. I just don't like having that little piece flap around, but again, we're recreating a recipe, so we're leaving it on. So I'm gonna go ahead and season it up. A little bit of sea salt here. 
And Sergeant Gilbert reporting for duty, my friendly little pepper grinder boy. <laughs> my little friendly boy. I wouldn't go too thick on the pepper here, and we'll repeat that same process on the other side. Before we cook the salmon, let me introduce today's sponsor, Trade. And if you are even into coffee just a little bit, I highly suggest you give Trade a shot. Because Trade is a coffee service that makes it really simple and really fun to try out new coffees. And they get their beans from 55 plus top roasters, enabling you to make your best cup of coffee at home every single day. Personally, I love espresso, so Trade curated for me these three awesome dark espresso roasts. And honestly, all three have been really good, but I especially love this Mother Tongue Coffee Nebula Dark Roast. And come on, you gotta give it up for that packaging. That just looks super cool. Another feature from Trade that I really love is that they roast their coffee to order, meaning it will be shipped out to you within 48 hours of being roasted. If you know anything about coffee, having that fresh roasted coffee is definitely the best way to go. With free shipping, customizable plans, and the ability to cancel at any time, it's never been easy easier for you to discover really great coffee from the comfort of your own home. If you are ready to start your coffee adventure, you can click the link down in the description underneath this video and receive a free bag of coffee with any subscription purchase from Trade. Thank you Trade, and now back to the recipe. I'm just using a cast iron pan for the salmon medium high heat, putting in some neutral high heat cooking oil, that's avocado oil, you could use another one if you wish. And here we go, in with our salmon. And when you're laying any kind of meat in the pan, you wanna lay it away from yourself. If you do it this way, you could splash oil on yourself, which I've done before I've been burned really badly doing that. It's getting a little crowded, but I'm gonna try to squeeze one in down here. Here we go, just about two minutes. I'm gonna get under here with a little fish batch. Give it a flip, nice golden brown. And I know she says two minutes per side, but my fish is a tiny bit smaller, and I really don't want it to be overcooked right now. So I'm gonna do just 45 seconds after the flip and pull these things out when they're like medium rare. They need to finish in the sauce, not right now in the pan. At this point, I'll just remove all my salmon from the pan and put it onto a little tray. Next, we're gonna work with these little cherry tomatoes. I'm just first plucking them off the stem. Here are some little tricks you can use for these tomatoes. Be very careful doing this. Hold your hand flat, just like the fish, right? And my knife, I just sharpened, so it's gonna glide right through, boom. They're all halved, just like so. Although, you can also take two quart container lids and do the same thing. See if I can fit them all. Boom, every single one. The other lid goes on top like so. Now it's much safer. Slice right through. You can also use a bread knife if your knife is not sharp. Works great. Next, we're gonna mince up this garlic. I always start by smashing. That way you can just pop out the peels super easily. Cut that little hard root end off. And from here, I'll just slice. And I'll run my knife through a little bit so it's not so big. There we go, happy days. I'm now taking the same pan, just adding a little bit of melted butter. I realized I was supposed to sear the salmon in melted butter, I kind of forgot. However, I'll put a little more butter right now to compensate. In we go with our spinach. She cooked hers in stages, but my pan is pretty big. I think it's fine if I just do it like this. I always love cooking spinach. I don't know, it's just fun. If I was cooking spinach to eat, just like this, I would already be done cooking it right now. I turn the heat off. Generally, it gets overcooked all the time, right? It's gonna keep wilting even with the heat off the pan. She says to fry the spinach for three minutes, although it's been a minute and it's done. I just don't see the point. Adding my tomatoes, isn't that nice? Another two minutes of the tomatoes. At this point, we add the garlic. I've just been reviewing the recipe and I don't see salt going in here anywhere. And now I don't have any dry spring onions, so I'm just adding some fresh. It's at this point that I would really recommend if you're gonna try recreating this recipe, to put either some dry white wine or a mixture of 50% lemon juice, 50% white wine vinegar in place of the wine if you don't drink alcohol. That would really help it out a lot. And no salt. Okay, oh, that's so hard for me not to put salt in this. I gotta put it in. I would have definitely added some salt, but this is when we put in the cream. And once that cream has warmed up, I'm gonna start adding Parmesan. She uses two kinds of cheese, but because I don't know what kind of cheese she used, all that was in the ingredients was the word cheese, so I, I really don't know. I'm just going with Parmesan. And it was hard for me not to add salt, but Parmesan is salty, so hopefully this will fix it. I mean, it looks good. It's really, really simple, really, really simple, but it looks good. Okay, all the cheese is in. Got the heat just a little under medium right now, medium low. I'm gonna taste the sauce right now before I add the salmon. Not really changing the recipe, but I'm just seasoning it. Really standard stuff, right? I tasted it, it was lacking a little bit. A little salt and pepper. Again, the one thing that it's really missing that would make the biggest difference is a little bit of acidity, AKA the wine or the lemon. Even a touch of vinegar in here would really help. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. Taste again. 
Definitely a little bit better. At this point, our salmon is going back in into the cream sauce for a little swim. In her video, she cooks her salmon for 10 minutes in the sauce, which for me seems like a long time, but again, her pieces of salmon were much thicker. I'm gonna do just four or five minutes in the sauce, turn off the heat, let it sit for a minute, and then serve it up, which she did over pasta. I'm just gonna try it on its own. But of course, if you wanna have this with pasta, if you wanna have it with vegetables, with rice, with mashed potatoes, it would all play very well. Only thing left to do is serve this salmon up and give it a nice taste. Here we go. Going straight for the belly. Make sure I get some spinach, some tomato. Cheers. After the salmon has cooked in the cream sauce, it's definitely better now. Nobody's gonna have a bad experience making this. In fact, I think a lot of people are really gonna like it. I mean, for me to really take it to the next level, it's missing some acidity, as I've said earlier many times. Just a little bit of wine. Even right now, a little squeeze of lemon on top would make a world of difference. Also, I'm not a huge fan of when things are strictly cream. I always love mixing a little bit of, say, chicken stock with a little bit of cream or fish stock. Having said that, this is definitely not a bad dish. I would give this a solid 7.6 for me. Definitely worth making. Marcus, why don't you try this, man? Marcus is a home cook. Maybe I have the palate of the people. I mean, it's not bad, you know? It's not bad at all. I like it. I think it's delicious. More acidity, because the cream is kind of heavy. Woo! And I will say the tomatoes themselves add a little bit of acidity, although it still needs a little more. In fact, before we leave today, let me just squeeze a little bit of lemon. It's amazing how these little details in cooking, just that, can make a world of difference. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm. it really does make a big difference. Lighten it up, brighten it up, especially with all that cream. If you wanna keep learning today, here are two more fish videos that you can watch. And that one is all about pan-fried salmon with crispy skin, which is my favorite way to cook the fish. Down in the description, you will find the recipe for this video, as well as a link to the original creator's page, a bunch of links for all my favorite used equipment on the show. And we now have merch available if you wanna help support the channel. This is just one of many, and until next time, you know I love you and I'm out.